Okay. So, I learned this from anybody know Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins? Yes. Raise your hand if you've heard of him. Wow, very few people. Tony Robbins is a coach, as a like very well-known coach. I don't want you to trust me on this. Like, look it up from him, okay? Anybody have Netflix? Raise your hand if you have Netflix or access to Netflix, even if you don't pay for it. Okay. Else? Yeah. There's one good thing you can watch, two good things you can watch on Netflix, too. One of them is called The Social Dilemma, great thing. So you can lower your screen time, stop being micromanaged by the government. And uh, number, number one thing I think you should watch on social on Netflix is called I Am Not Your Guru. Let me, let me write it out. Mm. Um, I Am Not Your Guru by Tony Robbins. It's one of the conferences he does. It's, it's like trans, as they do it, there's like five or 6,000 people in attendance. It's translated to like 100 different languages live. It's a massive operation. People fly to it. It's about four to $5,000 a ticket for, for coaching. Not sure how much your upline is charging you for coaching, but the ticket for that costs four or $5,000. And um, it's a great video to watch. You can't make it up. Like when you see the stories of like, literally life's being changed, you can't make it up. You can't say like, well, it's a movie. No, it, you can't make it up. You have to watch it to, to understand that. So I recommend you watch it. Tony Robbins was a coach for Michael Phelps. He was a coach for Conor McGregor. He was a coach for, he, didn't, he never says it. I didn't know that one. He was a coach for um, uh, two different presidents of the United States. Wow. You know, does that give you enough credibility that he's pretty good at what he does? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, always, he always talks about starting his day actively. He, he starts his day moving and, you know, electricity in your body, just working out. He's just an all well around great man, great coach, has run over 50, 60 businesses, very successful guy. Point being is, he talked about the success cycle and how success typically looks like, okay? So this is a chart down here, and this down here is, um, I believe, time. So the further we go into this line is how much time goes by, okay? So imagine, obviously, this is zero, and this is, I don't know, 100, or 10 years, or one year, or six months, whatever you want to put it, okay? And this on the left, this bar, the higher it is, it's your skill set, okay? So let's say this is 0% skill set. This is 100% mastery of a skill set, okay? If you're drawing this and you're very melancholy and you don't wanna make mistakes, I'm going to draw multiple things. So you can either have multiple of these or like I'm gonna draw stuff and then erase it. Does that make sense? Just giving you a heads up. Oh, man. Thanks for the heads up. So let's say, who here's the sports person? Okay. Keep your hands up if you practice the sport, actually, or you're just a visual person. Okay. Um, so for sports, let's just say you pick up a new sport. Well, it'd be a new sport you've never tried, but you, you maybe wouldn't mind giving lacrosse, it a lacrosse. Lacrosse. Soccer, lacrosse. Cricket. 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 Hey, you know Claire was a lacrosse. lacrosse person. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Shuffleboard. So let's say you want to pick up tennis. Okay. Somebody said tennis. So let's say you want to pick up tennis. Right now, what's your, how much time have you invested? Zero. 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 What's your, what's your percentage of? Skill set. Of skill set. No. Zero. So you start right here, right? And now you pick up tennis. Just gonna give a couple examples. So now you pick up tennis. Think about how much you learn right away. That goes into the mastery of the skill. How much you learn right away. If you started to play on your first day, on the first week, how much, how, how long until somebody becomes a professional? You know Chang, my upline, she was a professional tennis player in Vietnam. 10 years. Broke her dad's heart 10, when, she, when she said she stopped. What's that? 10,000 hours? About 10,000 hours, yeah, 10,000 hours, you got it. Many years, okay? Okay, so it, but in one week, think about how much you learn if you don't know. So think about how much we go up on the first, let's say three months. What happens in your first three months of learning the brand new sport? You make a lot of mistakes. So you, good you get a lot of mistakes, but hey, yeah. you get the new shoes, you get signed up to some somewhere to play, you learn like 90, 80% of the rules of the game. That's a lot of rules to learn, 80 or 90%. So you learn the new rules, you start, like you hit it a few times, you, you get it in, you get it out, you get the new shoes, you, you even probably join like a social place where you, you meet people, now you're, now you're having tennis conversations, you get a couple of tennis inside jokes. So like how quickly do you say, how quickly, would you say it gets there pretty quickly to get to maybe like a, Remember, 100% mastery is like, anybody know a famous tennis player? Serena, Serena Rios. Williams. Serena. Serena. Yeah, you say the one from Spain, my guy from Spain. <laughs> Serena Williams. Know Rafael Nadal? <laughs> yeah. Serena Williams. Serena Williams is great, but Rafael Nadal is a lot better. <laughs> 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 
roll your eyes. You roll your eyes. No, no, no. I found a doll. See? <laughs> it also, it, I also, I, I, I also like math, so I got to look at the championships one. So yeah, I am biased, but also. <laughs> we can do that. Okay, so think about Serena Williams. That's a hundred percent mastery. Would you say? Or if, if you asked her, she'd probably not say that. Would you agree? Right. Yeah. She'd probably say I still got stuff to learn, but for us, yeah. okay. Super hundred percent mastery. How quickly do you? Would you agree with me? If this is thirty percent, you get up there pretty fast, just because you're learning all the rules, you're learning how to play basic, you're playing amateur level. Would you say you get up there pretty fast? Yeah. Right? Okay. Now, typically after that, what happens? Plateau. Now, it's, it's three months. You've been playing this sport for three months. Like, now you get tired. You get tired, yeah. All of a sudden, like, you don't like it anymore. Now you start making your first excuse to not go. One of the days that you signed up, maybe you even paid for it. Sick. And you didn't go. You get sick more often. <laughs> your shoes don't smell new anymore. <laughs> right? Your racket. Like, all of a sudden, yeah. Now, you, like, your hands might be a little sore from hey, grabbing the racket so much. So you go into a plateau. You, you might even, like, as time goes by, you might even lose a little bit of skill set. Would you agree? Anybody go to the gym, you get sore. Now you can lift, for a period of time, you can lift less just because you don't want to go in pain. Does that ever happen? So what, most people, what do they do here? Stop. Quit. Most people stop. They quit. They stop. So then, then they go and join the next sport. And then most people that keep doing that, they end up at golf, which... <laughs> Tiger Woods. <laughs> no, Tiger. But you see what I mean? Like people, okay, people that like human brain. Your brain, my brain, is designed to really enjoy this part. It's the high bug. So now I want you to think about your last relationship. <laughs> again, again, again. Hey, it, ha it doesn't have to be a, a, a it doesn't have to be a, a, a love relationship. It could be a friendship. It could be anything. Think about it. Could be it could be a, a a significant relationship where most people they just they get on the relationship. Think about how much you learn, how much you enjoy your first six months with a brand new person you're dating. You get to know you get to know their family. You get to know what they like. You do all the cool things. You get to see all the movies. You get to tell them everything about yourself that you like. You get to see everything. There's there's like a spike. Would you agree? There's like a, a like a fire that's created, like a, a an excitement, right? Like. Let, let, and we, we talked about this with, with like ladies getting ready. It's, it's, more, it's a little more apparent than in guys. Like ladies getting ready for the first couple of dates, they're like, like really, really taking care of, 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 the, of the appearance and stuff like that. Six months into the relationship, the lady has the, 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 the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 is this okay to say? Yes. Can I say that? Is this not so. kind of true? Hey, guys, do it too. Hey, a guy, a guy does it too. I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be chauvinistic or anything. The guy does it too. The guy when, when you first get the girl in the car for the first six months, and, 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 she, and you're driving her somewhere, you pick her up. Is the car clean? Yes, spotless. Do you even think of? Do you even think of the? There's nothing on the on the passenger side, is there? No. Do you have like? McDonald's stuff on the bottom? Uh -huh. Do you even think about the song, guys? That you're yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that song. Look, you see? Little birds. Hey, hey, that real fast. We're all the same, you know? Uh -huh. To a degree. I mean, there's going to be some of you in here that are like, well, I'm different. You're right. But to a degree, we're all the same. Now, hey, three, four, five years into that relationship with tennis for, for Serena Williams, for Serena Williams, or three, four, five years into that relationship with your boyfriend, maybe now it's you're engaged, or, or wife or husband. Is it the same? No. Do you think about the song? No. 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 My music. It's true. Let's be honest. It's, 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 as time goes by, okay, it's harder to get that skill. Why? Because at the beginning, you know zero. From, from zero to 30%, it's, it's really easy. You know what I mean? If, if you were to go vegan, people wouldn't like that. But if I told you that, you, could you do it for one day? Most people would be like, yeah, for one day. But one day I'll eat a wrap of the lettuce or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Would you agree? And it, and it happens, think about relationships, it happens the same way. Most people get to this point of plateau and they quit. Because your brain, and unless you until you develop maturity, which is why we have the books, which is why we have level one, level two, level three, which is, unless there's going to be a plateau at every point. And it could be fair or unfair. This plateau could mean like, in a job it could mean you get sick. Not even your fault, but you plateau because you, you start growing less. It could be like 
I don't know, some external factor, an outside influence. Your parents tell you that they don't want you to work. Then you go home, you stop working, your parents tell you to work. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> and then, you, you see what I mean? Everybody agree with this? Mm -hmm. yes, everybody agree there's a spike when you first start something new. There's that like new thing where excitement is high, which means production goes high. Any, any level two skier or assistant managers, you've seen somebody brand new start, kick ass right out of the gate. Yeah. They're right here. It's called, this right here is called the peak of Mountain Stupid. Mountain Stupid. Damn. It's called the peak of Mountain Stupid. Why? Because they haven't seen any challenges. They haven't seen any challenges. So you just go up and up and up and it's excited. And like, if you look at an experienced leader and you're on their team and they're, and they're, you're growing super fast, you're crushing it, you want to get promoted, it's, you've been in business for seven days, <laughs> you're already trying to get promoted, which is great. We appreciate the ambition. Now, what happens is the person's like, your upline, if they have experience, they're not excited actually. They're like, hmm, skeptical. I'm skeptical. That's why I take a little more serious level two promotion than level one. Does that make sense? Not because I don't like people to get to level one. It's because I know level two is going to involve going through the, going through the, the yes. plateau. And most people, if they don't quit, okay, put, put into a, a mind that people here are going to quit. So let's say, let's say this is month three in our business, but you've got to understand, like you've got to relate it. If this chart was, was you being a, a, a doctor, this would be the third year. So some people here would say, well, Richard, but there's, there's a lot of turnover in this company. It's the same amount of turnover that you'll see for people that want to be doctors. It's just, it happens that doc to be a doctor, you got to complete a 10 year situation. And, to, and so here we're just doing it in one year. We're experiencing the same amount, just in less time. So it feels more, but that's not true. You know what I mean? It's like if somebody would date like 12 people in a year, like it would seem more, but they'll have the same turnover. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Same if you started all these sports. So I'm just trying to compare, like, <coughs> or college. You know? Do you know how, what's the percentage? Somebody look it up for me on Google. What's the percentage of people, without the push-ups? What's the percentage of people that uh, start college and don't finish it? I bet you it's over 50%. I don't know the numbers. So think about how many people go in debt. Do, they, do you get back the loans if you quit college? No. So you still owe the money. But you, how many people are turning over from college? You know what I mean? Why? Because they're excited, first year, they met that new, new girl, like, ooh, <laughs> new guy. Hey, they might even uh, sign up for a different gym. You all of a sudden go to the library with your new books. <laughs> Don't you do that? And then, and then you, it's exciting, whatever, first year goes by, second, now you're on all part. Third year, you're like, yeah, this is, I'm done. 32.9. 32.9 of people drop out or finish? 40% drop out total. They drop out? 40% of people drop out of college. So 40% of people drop out of a four year. So imagine this time, if this was a college graph, okay, this would be year four. And by 40%, so 40% of the people drop out, and we would find out by when, but 40% is, is, is a lot of people. You see what I mean? Yeah, that's a lot. So you gotta understand, like most people do not like this because sometimes to, to learn a new skill, you're going to plateau which happens to every person. You go into a little slump, and, and you know what? You know what's different? Your skill is the same. It might even drop a little bit, but what's different in this stage than in this one? Excitement. The excitement level, because it's no longer new. Every kid likes the new shoes. Nobody likes to wear old shoes. Nobody likes to wear your shoes that you've been wearing for four years. Would you agree? Yeah. Don't you feel great when you buy the new Nikes? They look, you don't need to go take them to clean them. They're just white. You know what I mean? Yeah, gotcha. People like that. That increases production. In college, increases your efficiency dating, increases your ability in a sport, increases, obviously, growth in a job, okay? Most people here quit when they go start something new. Because nobody, people do not like this. <laughs> people don't like feeling like they're spending more time and sucking. You don't like it, I don't like it. You don't like like going to the gym and having now, you, know, you have to like, eat more and like almost you have to like be more fat before you actually start cutting them. You know what I mean? You have to. Sometimes you're like, I'm trying to lose weight. They're like, you gotta eat more. You're like, well, so does that make sense? So I need you guys to understand that. Most people think that and they quit, they start again. How really it looks like, okay? There's two types of people. You have people that quit and you, um, and you have people, sorry, you have people that, I don't know how to spell it, dabble, okay? And the person that dabbles, instead, they get here and they're all confused. This is Alejandro. And they're like, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? Because it sucks. And then they start growing again. This 
It's a very confusing time. This means, think about how much time is being spent, not much time, but you're getting like, this is the person that, you, you'll do 10 sales, you do zero. Four, zero. It's like, it's so annoying because you just, you know you can, but it just leaves you and it's like this just, so, it's a frustrating time. And then all of a sudden you get some consistency again and you're like, I got it. But what happens there? Again, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Growth. Then you grow again. And most people think, okay, most people think success is gonna be like that. Like success. By the way, don't attach success to this business. Okay, I'm just teaching you. Like, again, Tony Robbins. This is not from our job. This is your relationship. Your relationship with your wife is going to have a plateau. You're going to have to face. I'm speaking, I've been married for a very little time, but I can tell you, like, you're, you're going to have to face, like, the, 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 the demons of your life that you have to fix to maintain that relationship for your, the rest of your life, or you're going to go into the 60% divorce rate. Nobody gets married trying to get divorced, would you agree? Who gets married trying to, like, hey, let me give up 50% of my salary <laughs> for somebody else? Nobody does that on purpose, would you agree? Does it happen, though? Do you know anybody that's happened to? Exactly. Why? Because you gotta, you gotta face. You gotta, you gotta humble down. You gotta understand now you're less efficient. You get, you get less success, less progress for more time. We don't like that. We're just, we're just immediate gratification animals. If you can master delayed gratification, if you can master, like mastering a skill, understanding this part. Most people quit in this part. People don't ever get through like that ups and downs. If you can just stay steady, stay like steadfast, and stay. Like consistent, man. Spending the time. If you look at this like a ten-year thing, it, you might have a shot at it. But I want you to think about it like that. You know, most people think success will be like that, but like, hey, in a marriage, it's going to be like that with your spouse, with your kids. If you have kids, it's probably going to be like that. I have a five-month-old, so I'm not there yet, but I'm sure it's going to be a time where your kids don't like you, or your kids like don't want to be with you that much. Now you're not that exciting, daddy or mommy. Now they're just like, leave me alone. I'm 12 now, <laughs> right? There's going to be a time where you're going to have to go through a slump. You can't just give up, right? You're not trained to give up. And by the way, if somebody trained you to give up or stop doing stuff when it gets hard, I would recommend cutting a relationship with that person, even if that person's very close to you. It could be your mom. Like, hey, mom, you've been teaching me to quit everything I do when it gets hard. That's, your mom is just trying to protect you. Your mom did, you know what I mean? Your mom's not bad. It's not a bad mom. Your mom's just, just is so loving and protective that's just really hurting you. You know, you want your child to never fall off the bike, no, never no. like get a little, get a little hurt. You want your no, right? You want your kid to fall, stand up, and get on the bike and try again. Would you agree, Dee? Is that is that fair for your kids? So I want you to look at, do a graph like this and where you're at, or even look at the last leader. You look at Justin. Where's Justin at? Where's my man Justin? Justin, 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 Justin I think is right here. I believe he's got a little more fuel before he hits the mountain, stupid peak. <laughs> he's still high on achievement. You see his face? He's like, oh. It's like drunk. <laughs> right? But then you're going to go in here. There's typically a, like, this is the valley of despair. And when people are in the valley, we're going to go reach out to, to, to save you. But you got to be available. You know what I mean? We're going to reach out to save you because guess what? For this business, anybody that's finished the program, guess where they went through? The, the Valley of Despair. Some, yeah, some people had a tent there for months. Hello, Valley. <laughs> okay, Hello, look, I remember, I remember trying to save Chloe from the Valley and I, I, I changed Chloe's program. I'm like, Chloe, I'm going to get, put you on the phone program. Why do I do that? Because that's going to put her right here again. So what's that going to do to Chloe? Oh, all of a sudden, now I'm not doing water anymore, so now I don't suck. So now I'm going on a trip to Philadelphia. Now I'm going to get to new, be a new leader. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Is Chloe doing great? Mm -hmm. yeah. Chloe's doing great. But everybody hits the valley. Every single person, the best of you will hit the valley. It's going to happen. You just got to understand, like, it's a part of growth, okay? So I want you guys to take a look at this and analyze, like, hey, uh, what do I do typically? Analyze this and maybe respond to your like, What do I do whenever I hit the... Whenever I hit the, the, the valley, like, you know what's the answer? You know, what do you guys think is the answer? What do you have to do when you hit the valley? 
activity. No, it's 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 hard. It's easier said than done. But like most people, when they when when people start sucking at a sport, do they do it more or less? Yes. But what's the real answer if you want it to match to the sport? Got to hit the ball one more time, one more time. So that's my my, my advice for you. Hey, you're, you're you're sucking. You're going through your valley. Don't look at it like it's the end. Look at it like it's the beginning. It's my valley. Let me master it. Even some of you guys here that have some pride, you didn't want to do this business, or you look at this business like it's not your long-term thing, that's okay. But don't be, but master it. At least master it. And if you quit, make it make it be your choice, not your business. You know what I mean? Yes. Or like, hey, I'm going to quit, but I could do it. Okay? Go through the valley. Increase activity. This is, the, this is where we look at you like a, a person that's going to lead people, where it's like, oh, wow, this person starts to do bad, and instead... They pick up the phone and ask more questions. They don't miss their breakdown. This person, when they do bad, when they're, it's time to have shame and be embarrassed, now they increase activity. They come in early and they stay late. But like, you know I'm doing bad? So instead of resting, I'm gonna go out on Sunday. Instead of leaving at four, I'm gonna leave at five on Saturday. Instead of leaving, I'm gonna do more because I'm producing less with more time. Everyone hates that. Everybody loves doing 10 sales on water when they're like just rocking it. But nobody, hit, nobody likes, you know, that it's your fifth month and you're barely scratching two, mm. and, and you're supposed to do. We have people on your team doing better than you, and it's embarrassing. And nobody likes just doing twice the work to only get 20% of the results you used to get. Does that make sense? Yes. So just encourage you to like check on this and like, hey, what's my attitude? What's my attitude when the after the peak of Mountain Stupid? What's my attitude in the valley? What's my attitude been in my life past before this? Some of you guys might be in this job because you just hit the valley on your last job. I recommend changing that. Is that okay to say? Yes. You guys think you can use this? Yeah! Cool, it's 1129. We're back at break. Uh, back for uh, 12, 1, 3. Break! No. Upline, buy 